It's Championship Saturday here in Durham at Wildcat Stadium as the top seeded University of New Hampshire Wildcats play host to the number two seeded Vermont Catamounts in the 2020-21 America East Men's Soccer Championship. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff Poster alongside Cam Beal. Today's weather, not too bad here for this one. Temperature 48 degrees, a little bit of a breeze there coming southeast at 10 miles per hour. It's cloudy, but I think, Cam, it's going to stay dry for this one. That's the hope, at least. Yeah, it's, a, it's, all, it's all we can ask for after yesterday, <laughs> Jeff. So as we come up to this one, we get a look at the Catamounts there getting ready. This is the 65th all-time meeting, but Vermont has been pretty dominant historically. 36-19-9, 4-2-0 in this tournament, though this is the first time these two have ever met in a championship of this conference tournament. Last time it was back in 2012, so none of these guys familiar with that previous meeting. It was a UNH win, one to nothing. Uh, UNH 2-0-3 in the last five, including the season series this year, 1-0-1. Games were split home and away for the Wildcats. Most recently, they closed out the regular season last Friday up in Vermont. That was the victory, a two to one victory for the Wildcats in the first meeting here, a double overtime, no score, uh, zero zero tie. So two teams that are familiar with each other and should be, uh, should be a fun one. Yeah, the Wildcats may be they may be undefeated against the Catamounts this year, but if there's one team in the conference that has had UNH's number yes. all season long, as much as they can, I guess, it's been the <laughs> Vermont Catamounts. Said UNH, the top-seeded team here, the home team in their white tops with the blue numbers. We'll move left to right across your screen. Vermont, the number two seed with the green tops and yellow numbers. We'll move right to left, and we are underway with Vermont controlling out of the gates. Vermont coming in 5-1-1 one one overall, 4-1-1 one one in the America East. They finished second to UNH in Pool A. And we're the number two seed coming into this tournament, coming off a victory in which they defeated NJIT, the Highlanders, on Thursday night. Just a one to nothing score there as UNH with the takeaway. They are coming off a victory themselves uh, over number four, Hartford, Thursday night. That was a 2-0 victory for the Wildcats. And we have our first whistle here against the Catamounts as down on the turf, Sam Henneberg, the 5'9 grad student out of England. So UNH got their first throw in here from the near side. Chance to strike early. Or rather, the free kick as Bilal Kamal is ready to go. And here it is. Header opportunity missed by a couple of Wildcats, and Vermont trying to clear it out. That one was blocked. UNH still in control. Cam, the name of the game for Vermont is their defense. I mean, they lock down, and guys, they are one of the top-ranked defenses in the country. Yeah, the Catamounts are the only team in the conference, Jeff, that are better in terms of opposing goals, yes. goals per game. They're the only team better than the Wildcats season. Coming into this weekend, Wildcats allowing an average of .86. The Catamounts, .5, just half a goal a game. But the thing that the UNH has the advantage in is offense. Vermont doesn't score a lot of goals. Only two games this year where they've scored more than one goal, whereas UNH has only scored less than two goals once, and that came in that nil-nil draw against these very same Catamounts. Catamounts, their defense, number fourth in team's goals, goals against average. Fourth in the country. They're also fourth in save percentage, fourth in shutout percentage. So. If they get a lead on you, it's going to be tough for you to come back. Yeah, I like what I see from the Wildcats right now, though, because generally the Wildcats, they, I don't want to say they come out tentative, but they kind of, they feel things out out of the gate. But once that first goal comes across, they know how to pour it on. But right now the Wildcats, we just saw it on the, off the free kick off their last possession. They're coming out hot right now. I like the energy from the Wildcats right now, trying to get up early. Just got to look at Garrett Lilly on your screen with the toss in. Putting it in the direction of Bjarni Aldinsonson. The seven freshmen that Vermont tends to rotate out there. They'll use a decent amount of substitutions for head coach Rob Dow in his fourth season. Adrian Dubois, Cameron Olson, and Randy Coble, the assistants. On the other side, Mark Hubbard, 
His sixth season at the helm of this Wildcat team and the Wildcats trying to three-peat. Winners of the 2018-2019, see Mark Hubbard right there. Which Ryan Reeb, Nick Thompson, and Dave Wilson. And then helping him out. Hubbard's all-time record at UNH since taking the job. 69, 22, and 14 after the other. And here we UNH go, record. UNH with the early opportunity. A catamount goes down, still in control, shot. And I believe we had a whistle just before the shot. Take another look. Good pass over. So no goal there <laughs> for Paul Mayer. He had the he had a pretty good game the last time these two met up last Friday. A goal and an assist in that one. As we've got a Wildcat down. Take another look. See what and see what happened here. Yannick Bryce took a shot straight to the chest there. That's Evan Rulo from Vermont who. I don't think it was intentional. I mean, there's a little bit of an elbow maybe in the chest. And hopefully, it'll be all right. Got it right. And Jeff, going back to that last run that the, the Wildcats just made with Paul Mayer running up ahead, that's one thing that the Wildcats always have an advantage on. They're a lot bigger than a lot of teams, and they're a lot faster than a lot of teams. See, Paul Mayer generally has his way running down the field. And one guy who doesn't start for the Wildcats, Victor Menudier. Yes. An absolute star for this team. He's, he was the fastest guy on the field the other day against uh, Hartford. So once he enters the game, that's when you know Mark Hubbard's really putting his foot on the gas. Yep, two goals scored for Menudier, both goals in the win over Hartford on Thursday night. Not a bad weapon to uh, have one of your leading scorers come off the bench. Hubbard does that a lot. You've seen it at points this year. Paul Mayer, who's been probably their most consistent, their best player all season, even even better than Minutier at points. He's come off the bench sometimes. Minutier comes off the bench. O'Driscoll. Oh, this is probably the deepest roster we've seen out of this Wildcats program in the last three, four years. Burst of speed trying to catch this one before it goes out the over the goal line uh, to our right for Paul Mayer, but he wasn't going to have a chance at that one. So Nate Silvera, who has started all six of the games that he's appeared in. He's allowed three goals, made 17 saves, 880 save percentage, and four shutouts. He is among the best in the nation. Alejandro Robles just won his second straight America East goalkeeper of the year, but if there was anyone that was going to give him a run for his money, yep. it was going to be this guy. Well, part of the thing with Vermont, too, is they only played these six games that were conference games. A couple of the other teams in the conference, and we talked about this on Thursday uh, as they played the Highlanders and New Jersey Institute of Technology, they had played nine. So Vermont, just a limited game sample size, obviously it's that kind of year. This is for everybody. Yeah, that 0-0 draw back in the beginning of March, I believe, against these two teams. That was Vermont's first game of the season. Yep. It was New Hampshire's third. Early their third as Mayer draws some contact there, and Henneberg will toss it in. Blue will keep an eye on just a short toss to Mayer. Taking it off his chest. It's up on the shoulders of a couple of guys there. Comes back out to Kamal. And he tried to drop it back, but it was just a couple of green kits there. And now we've got another catamount down as Bridger Hansen tried to come in and take that one away. And man down was Alex Nagy. Alex Nagy, he was the lone goal scorer on Thursday night. It was his first goal of the season. Couldn't have come at a better time. Scored in that first half, moving this direction. Had a potential second goal that was taken away after an offside was called. And there's your first grab of the afternoon by Robles. And one of my favorite things that, that I see when I watch the Wildcats is you see their front line of, you know, Bilal Kamal, Paul Mayer, Gould, whoever they have up there, Manudier, 
whoever's in the game at that point. They they never let off the other team's defense. Those forwards are always looking to get a steal around midfield or even in the other team's half. Robles taking his time, now boots it a good ways down the field. Robles, all eight games, all eight starts. He's allowed four, 19 saves, 826 percentage, and he's had three shutouts this season. Trying to get back to the NCAA tournament for the third time. He gets it back on his foot again. Up to the far side of the field, Wildcats. It might be a trip there, no, no whistle. Instead, Silvero just grab it. Of course, the winner of this game, the America East's automatic qualifier into the NCAA tournament. UNH possible, should Vermont come away with this. Could get an at-large bid, but obviously they want to come away as the three-peat champions as they take away here. And moving up the other direction is Bright. And swing it across to the far side of the field. Nice little stutter step, trying to keep it in, and the only way to do it is just put it back on Vermont. And a couple guys to keep an eye on here, Jeff, is Yannick Bright and Linus Fallberg. You know, right right outside that box, they're not a, they're not afraid to let it rip from right there, in between kind of the 10 and the 20. There's Gould, just mentioned him. This one comes back over there, looking to get it, I think, to Kamal. This is going to come all the way out to the near side of the field and back to Henneberg. And Rulo will take it away the other direction for the Catamounts. It's some room to run. Well, maybe not. Right, just mentioned him. Stops that advance, dead in its tracks. Here's Hannah Berg. Thursday night, Vermont did such a good job against NJIT. Anytime they had possession, you would see about three Vermont players collapse down. Hercules tires are meant to dig dirt, sling mud, and pound pavement to get you safely to your destination. See what tires are right for you by visiting HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, the official tire of the America East Conference. Ride on our strength. Silvera with the big boot. Adalstonson got a header on it, but UNH basically punts it right back, and Silvera will grab again. 34-35, remaining here in the first half, no score. And we had the brief stoppage when Yannick Bright was down. And she had the wind knocked out of him. So we'll go all the way back to Robles. And there are a limited amount of fans in the stands today. It's nice to see. Henneberg brings it back to Hansen. And he'll center with Bright. Here we go. broken up by Vermont. And Vermont prides themselves on their defense. They start eight defensemen. Yeah, I was just going to say this, Jeff. I was just looking at this. In the America East, the only team that allows less shots than the uh, Vermont Catamounts is UNH Wildcats. They're at the top of the league in terms of least shots allowed coming into the weekend. Uh, UNH had allowed 13, Vermont just 17 on the season. So those will be tough to come by today. You just Fallberg drawing some contact there as he goes down, taking, let's see it. I think Noah Egan, who is an America East all first teamer for Vermont this year, he wasn't thrilled in the free kick opportunity here for the Wildcats. As Kamal gets set up again, second one for him today. Header comes right back out. Kamal was charging in. Couldn't get to it though. Aldinsonson will play it off his body. Rulo, if he can catch up to this, Rulo does. Gets into the box. He's got two white jerseys to get past. They back him into the corner and he'll have to reset. Great recovery by the Wildcats there. And comes back, Neji had the lone goal on Thursday. Looking for all Dinstenson, and that one's knocked away. I believe that was Hansen. 
got to it first. Vermont keeping it in. This one, the header goes wide to the left. And, oh, get back. So, like you said, Cam, a good recovery there by UNH. And Rulo had all kinds of field in front of him to work with. And he stopped his advance. And Jeff, here we go. Victor Minutier coming into the game. Minutier, the 6'2 senior out of France. Yeah, that's, uh, like that, that same play we just saw from Vermont is the type of the type of stuff you see from Victor Minutier all afternoon long. Keep an eye on him in transition, just trying to catch the defense sleeping. And right on cue, he was involved. He didn't get a piece of that one, but in his direction, Liam Bennett. Yeah, but it'll be tough to find a guy on the field faster than Victor Minutier today. Looking to get it to him, trying to get some position in front of that was. Arian Pilja. Might have been Egan. Egan, the America East all first teamer. Also had the rookie of the year out there on the field, too. Pachella. Of course, I already mentioned Robles, the goalkeeper of the year. One thing that you're seeing from the Wildcats right now is they work best in terms of scoring when they're kind of in between the hash marks. Some teams like to go deep in the corners and cross. The Wildcats like to play from the middle. Vermont was looking for a call there, not going to get anything, and Silvera dives on top of that one off the shot. Take another look here. Kamal. And an opportunity for Mayer. I think Vermont, you might have caught them there. Usually their defense is pretty stout, but they were looking for a whistle that they didn't get. Yeah, you've got to like the way this, this game is going if you're the Wildcats right now, you know. Like like we mentioned earlier, Vermont right up there with UNH, the two top defenses in the conference. And you've you've only got one shot so far, but you're you're getting right around the net. You're getting looks inside the box. And so you gotta think the longer this game goes on, the better better chances the Wildcats will get down there. Two total shots, one that being the first one on goal that Silvera dove on top of. This one riding the sideline. UNH finds position. I think Vermont thought that was gonna roll out the side. Wildcats go down, they're looking for a whistle. And the officials are kind of letting them play here a little bit in the championship game. This one gets some air underneath it. It's always a fine line you gotta walk for the right. officials in these championship <laughs> games because you don't want to be the reason that one team goes home. Yep. You want to let them play and let the game kind of decide itself, but there's something egregious out there. It's Fallberg. Backing up as Vermont looks to throw in. Garrett Lilly. Lilly was very involved. Thursday night, here's a good look opportunity for Mayer, and Vermont breaks it up again, still in play. Minutier had a second chance there at the end. Mayer and Minutier. Yeah, that's a chance you're gonna look back on if you're UNH, so that's one Victor Minutier wants back. I think he just couldn't get a clean look at it, couldn't get enough, enough cleat on that one. Take another look. Yep, she could have handled it cleanly. So, so far, Silvera and the Catamount defense, as advertised. Lily on the far side, this one pops out. We'll stay with Vermont, though. Right in front of their own bench. Lily just, now he steps back, didn't like the, aim, the look that he had. He's actually going to give it off to Rulo and throw it in. Throw it! Throw it! Throw it! Throw it! Taking their time. Now Rulo gets it. And the Wildcats with the takeaway. Adolstenson slides down and gets in front of Mayer. Broke that one up. Adolstenson. Freshman out of Iceland, both he and 
Emir Modgersen. Accurary, Iceland, if I, hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> but you got it. Both of them coming over. A lot of international talent, just across the entire conference in general. And Silvera with another save. He's been busy. Pilja had it taken away. Wildcats the other direction. Jacob Gould, haven't seen him so too much here early in the first half. He gives off to Meyer. Meyer looking for, he was looking to get that over to Menudier. Menudier is looking for a call, I think against Silvera, who came crashing in. Take another look at this one. Silvera so actually had to jump over his own man and was just trying to bat it. That was Pilja, I think, who kind of crashed into Menudier. Silvera's so getting his work in here early. Dalsonson plays it. This one too far ahead, and Bennett will grab. Former America East student athlete interested in staying connected with the conference, networking with other former student athletes, professional development opportunities, and more? Learn more and sign up at americaeast.com slash alumni. 2509 left here in the first half as this one squeaks out the near sideline, and Vermont will take it back. Pilger to th throw it in. Oh, we've got a substitution, it looks like, first. Max Murray. Fairly local out of Kennebunkport, Maine. 6'5 freshman as Rulo takes a seat. Dalstonson's header. Look at the box out here <laughs> from the Catamounts. Just so they teach it. That was Neji. He had his arms wrapped around Sam Henneberg. And if you're the Catamounts here, I think you really got to, you know, I don't want to say throw the kitchen sink at the Wildcats <laughs> here, but I think you got to loosen the bolts a little bit because, you know, if you're the Wildcats, you know, the, the Vermont doesn't necessarily have the imminent threat of goal scoring. That's not really their calling card. For the Wildcats, they have one of the top defenses and the top offense in the league. So if you're Vermont, you got to try and capitalize when you can. You can't squander any opportunities early in this game. Of the two most regular, I guess you could say regular playing forwards for Vermont, Jojo Moulton Condiotti and Riley Uri. Uri did play Thursday night, albeit briefly. You see players getting tangled up and Catamount going down. I think that was Lily. So they have free kick opportunity. There's a header and Wildcats clear it. And will bounce out. Heads up play by the Catamounts to just let that one go. As Kamal touched it last. But they do not play. They don't really put forwards into the game. And they rely on their midfielders to, to score. And that really tells you really tells you all you need to know about this Catamount team because they, they're the only team this year that's been able to keep the Wildcats at bay, like I mentioned. The Wildcats, yep. they've scored four goals in three different games this year, and, and the Catamounts have been able to keep them in check to a certain extent. So that tells you just how good of a defense Vermont, Vermont really has up there. Nobody on Vermont has more than one goal scored this season. That's a 
Keeper, that's a sit. Keeper, sit. Keeper, sit. Trying to get back to NCAA Tournament Vermont. It's been a while for them. They last won this conference in 2015 as a nice read of it by Robles there. Just jumps up and catches that one. He takes a bit of a tough bounce away from there, but a nice takeaway. And he can't, can't keep it in. Didn't say last touch by Vermont, though. And we have a UNH substitute. Chris Pinkham. Check in. He had an assist in one of the two goals scored in the game last week. Bright, nice job to keep that one alive. UDA trying to work through a crowd. It's taken away. It's Kamal, and Kamal sends it out the side. Kamal, a sophomore out of London. Mayor out of France. Kamal out of England. Bright, Italy. Falberg, Sweden. Enneberg's out of England. All kinds of international talent. This one actually can come back. Well, it's not going to reach Henneberg as a Dinstenson. And what you saw right there from Vermont was a, a prime example of what we were just talking about. We saw four catamounts swarming the Wildcats right there along the yep. near sideline, not allowing any room to breathe. It's kind of their calling card. It's, they'll collapse down on you. So you see it. Again, Mayor with the, actually, I thought Aldinsonson kind of dove towards it, but uh, I think Mayor gave him a little bit of help uh, towards, <laughs> towards that ball. And going back to what we were saying about Vermont and their defense. UNH, they're not a one-dimensional team on offense. I think no. they have some of the most crisp passing I've seen in the conference, but they also have guys like Minutier, Kamal, um, O'Driscoll when he's in there. Those are guys that like to beat defenders one-on-one -on -one off the dribble, even Fallberg. They got a lot of guys, some of the best passers in the league and some of the best one-on-one -on -one guys in the league. Egan sent that back to Silvera, who booted it right onto the header from Hansen. And a whistle here against the Wildcats. See Noah Egan there, sophomore, over in California. Just four seniors, regularly playing seniors in this Catamount team, whereas UNH has got nine guys that will regularly, or at least semi-regularly play that are either seniors or grad students. So they're looking to capitalize and finish off their career strong here in Durham. Vermont won't lose too much going into next year. This will stay with UNH as Henneberg to toss in. Nudie Yang. Again, collapsed defense down. And it's taken away. I know. You can barely tell because they have yellow numbers on yellow jerseys, but it's fine. Green and yellow is such an ugly color. Side of the pitch here for Vermont. This leading pass is kept in. Or no, maybe not. It's a bit too late. Good on effort. That one. <laughs> nice run there by Pilja. Trying to keep that one in. I thought he got it. So Robles will start things off here. Vermont kind of weathered the storm early. UNH had a lot of action in the goal box with Silvera. And the last few minutes here, we've seen a lot of play to our left and about midfield too. Yeah, what we've seen from UNH today, it's a little bit backwards as opposed to what we normally see. Normally, like I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, they come out a little bit tentative, just kind of feeling out the game until they break through for that first one. We saw them come out hot and now they're kind of easing back in a little bit and letting Vermont play their game. Iggy's gonna take a seat as checking in Jacob Vitale. Maybe his sixth appearance. 
It's got a goal on two shots this season. Action here for Bryant as it's taken away. Hansen with the takeaway, and this one gets booted all the way back. Just Vermont there waiting for it. Bridger Hansen is on the all conference yep. first team along with Robles, O'Driscoll, and Paul Mayer for the Wildcats. Hansen kind of anchoring that defense in front of Robles. Hansen also named the Defender of the Year in the Americas. If Meyer can turn the corner here and look to set something up, it comes mid. There's a shot from Kamal and a nice stop right in front of him. That was Pachella, the rookie of the year. It's named the second team. Kamal again. Has to drop this one back. That's bright. Missed opportunity there for gold. This one will come out and see who touched it last. Take another look. This was Meyer trying to turn the corner. To get it back to Kamal. Watch the block. He just turned around. <laughs> what he made that. Nothing you could do besides turn your back and eat it there. So Daniel Pacella, freshman out of Montreal with the stop there. Perfect feed for Kamal right there. The America East Volleyball Championship is brought to you in part by Ready, the official sports drink of the America East Conference. Ready Sports Drink is a game changer in performance hydration that powers you through all your performances with advanced hydration based on science. Check out Ready Sports Drinks at TeamReady.com. Ready Sports Drinks for game-changing performance energy and recovery. 15.05 remaining in a scoreless first half in the America East Men's Soccer Championship. No whistle that time as Pilja got knocked down from Bright. This will come back to Robles. Two of them just kind of jockeying for position. You know, past the goal line, so Robles will start it off. A 14 and a half remaining. Remember the first matchup between these two ended in a 0 0 tie, so there's definitely a history of them going back and forth with not much to show for it. Neither team really in that one had great scoring opportunities throughout it. UNH did have a penalty kick. Uh, from Bilal Kamal in the first half, and obviously didn't have anything to show for. Vermont didn't even have a shot until the first overtime in that game. And neither team even had a shot on goal during the over the first overtime. So we played 110 minutes of that one and nothing to show for it. Dinsonson comes crashing in, knocks that one loose. Wildcats will have to reset. Bright will start it off. And on the far side, that's Seville. Seville just appearing in his fourth game this season, but he's been impactful since coming back. See him. There's the three again. Three green kits. Collapsed down. It's tripped up. So free kick opportunity here for the Wildcats. Keep an eye on Manudier and Paul Mayer yep. streaking towards the net here. Paul kicks it in. This one headed up and Silvera just tracks it down well wide, right? Couple of substitutions here for Vermont. Well, maybe not. Boo. Boo. 
your team. It's like Maud Garrison was going to come in. And something that I mentioned earlier, you know, the Wildcats, they get a lot of good scoring opportunities mm -hmm. off those free kicks like that because, like I mentioned, they're, they're such a big and physical team. They have height on a lot of teams, you know, Yannick Bright, Paul Mayer, Bridger Hanson, they're able to get up high in that box and get their head on it. And that's part, part of the reason why they're so successful on the other end of the field too. Guys like Bridger Hanson able to clear the ball out when it gets in the box. It's a little back and forth here. Comes back to Vermont in their own end. Midfield, UNH takes it back. Vincentson and Garrett Billy kind of creating a wall there. And it works out as UNH can't keep it inbounds. Liam Bennett couldn't handle it. Now they'll get those substitutions in there. So it's Emir Mod Garretson. Also out of Iceland. Pilja takes a seat. Cats take it back here. 11 minutes just about remaining here in the first half. Still scoreless. Again, Liam Bennett having a little bit of trouble there last few possessions, keeping that one in. Bright. This one off the bottom of the foot of Kamal. Able to sneak one through. And ahead. This, let's see the speed of Minutier. Does get past those two defenders, but not before it comes back to Silvera. Right before that play, I was just about to say, this one's playing out eerily similar to what we saw yesterday. <laughs> the Wildcats, you know, 0-0, zero, zero, about to head into halftime. I think it was around the 40th minute, Victor Minuti, a near identical play to that, streaking down the field by himself, able to chip one in. So, look for the Wildcats to try and kick up the intensity of the final 10 minutes of this half, gain some momentum heading into the locker room. Nice job by Bridger Hansen there to get position in front of Adalstensen does go out the far side and Catamounts will retain here. So into the box and just pops up and into Robles' hands. The Zone is happy to partner with America East Conference to help its student athletes have personalized wellness coaching in their pockets so they can feel and perform their best. That's the Zone. Nine twenty-six. One guy headed to the substitution table right now for the Wildcats about to check in. Diego Taribo doesn't really stack up a lot of stuff in the box score, but does a lot of little things to help the Wildcats you know, get involved. So keep an eye on Diego Turibo once he checks in here. He's another one of those grad students out there. And that's the old cliche when it comes to the postseason. You lean on your your seniors, or I guess your grad students in this case, yep. to kind of carry you. And they might not be the ones that always, like you said, have kind of the box score stats, but that veteran leadership. So there he is, out of Herencia, Spain. His fifth appearance. He does have an assist, just the one point so far this season. He's only taken one shot. Oh, Header backwards, and Gould is able to catch up to it. De defense plays it nicely and couldn't keep it in. I think that was Lily on the far side of the field for the Catamounts. And that one assist that you mentioned there for Toribio, that one came off. It was a corner from the near side over here. Three headers in a row for the Wildcats, finally found the back of the net. And that's how they like to score. They're like, chaos breeds goals for the Wildcats. Like I mentioned, they like to play in front of the net, not from the corners. Big time shove from behind as down goes. That was Henneberg. Yeah, took the shot. There's another look at that one. Yeah, kind of just blindsided. I don't know if it just was Maybe the momentum catching up to him from Vitaly. He couldn't stop himself, but it's a good opportunity for the Wildcats. Here we go. Vermont's, Vermont's eighth foul, eighth foul on the day, excuse me. 
New Hampshire with six. And the crowd, Vermont. Vermont does a good job of reading the ball on those free kicks as Henneberg again goes down. And this was McGerson. He fell at the end of that, and it's actually going to be a foul against the Wildcats. Yeah, something that I mentioned earlier about how the Wildcats are generally good at, you know, reading the ball off those free kicks, free kicks, excuse me, and able to get those headers. But Vermont does a nice job collapsing and really closing those gaps. They like playing defense. That much is evident. <laughs> Silvera with the boot. First touch by Bright. Team's kind of bobbling in here as Gould couldn't get it, control of it cleanly. Popped up by Taribo. Gould again, Gould kind of all over the field right now, trying to gain control. There's Hansen. Kamal, Taribio, Henneberg, and Kamal again. But we've got an injured Catamount down at 6.07 remaining. Some official checking the time. That's Emir Maud Gerson. We've seen a lot of fouls today from both sides. An aggressive game from mm -hmm. both teams, but you know, doesn't feel like tensions are necessarily running high, which is interesting. Well, Mott Garrison just looked like he kind of slipped. I don't, he might have gotten clipped after he had already come down. And he's going to go to the bench. Seems like both teams able to realize it's just good, hard-fought soccer today. Nothing, nothing chippy down there, which is something that the Wildcats aren't necessarily averse to. When, when, they, when they get up in these games, like I mentioned earlier, they've scored four goals in three different games. So those games, when they start to run it up in the second half, the opposing teams, they get a little chippy from time to time. Doesn't feel like that'll be the case here today, though. So substitutions for both teams. First appearance for Luke Madden this afternoon for the Wildcats. Five fifty five remaining here. Both teams have had some okay looks at the goal. Nothing that you would say, oh, I wish I could get that one back necessarily. And this is a good sign. You see Mark Garrison right back in there. I feel like we've seen the ball spending a lot of time kind of in the, in the Wildcats half, but Vermont never really gaining a, a whole ton of, you know, quality no. possession. Or, or you see the Wildcats, you know, they're crisp passing on the other side. They're more than happy to let their defense sit back until they get the look they're waiting for. Yeah, five, one, five to two, they... Shots and shots on goal for UNH, but just one, one shot, one on goal for the Vermont Catamounts. Guys like Yannick Bright and Bridger Hanson, they'll let things develop out here in front of Row Boys, but once they get the lane they're looking for, they really pedal to the metal once they cross midfield. This one comes out in front of the Catamounts bench, so they'll take it right back. Maybe an opportunity here for them to get in deep in the final four, 45. Right, gets in there and takes it away. Vermont goes right back with Jonathan Bryant. And here's Vermont, they've had to drop all the way back into their own end. And the Wildcats will take it back. And that's what, that's what UNH is so good at, not letting the other team's defenders sit back and wait for things to develop. Other side of the field. Pinkham, and off the bench. Better opportunity shot, 
and a score! A goal for the Wildcats as they take the one to nothing lead. And putting it in, I just mentioned he'd come in off the bench. Chris Pinkham. That's what I'm talking about with the Wildcats. Chaos breeds goals here in Durham. They like to make things chaotic up in front of that net. First goal of the season for Chris Pinkham. Takes it off his chest, puts it past Silvera. Team's so good in transition. And Silvera was creeping to his own right side of the net. And Pinkham got just enough on that. Look at the celebration there from the rest of the team. They all know it's his first goal of the year. And it may just be one, but that's that's a major momentum shift here for, for, for two reasons. One, when the Wildcats get the first one, the floodgates almost always open right up. Granted, it's right before halftime, not a ton of time to keep mm -hmm. things going like we saw on Thursday. But if you're the Vermont Catamounts, you don't have, like I mentioned, that imminent, that imminent goal scoring threat in your back pocket. You gotta work for your goals. Only scored two goals twice this season. You can see the immediate uptick in energy from the Wildcats right now. Henneberg getting the assist on that one as Pinkham his first. The man from just down the street in Concord. Hometown guy, could be the hometown hero. Long way to go in this one though with 319 left in the first. So this one well ahead, here's Menudier with that speed. This one looks familiar. A nice job getting right back in the action by Pilja. So, Silvera with the boot. Toribio got his first touch on it. And a bird. I think we have a whistle away from the action. It was a player down briefly, that was Bryant on his knees. Not sure. He said it was away from the action there. And Jonathan Bryant pops right back up. Oh. Oh, Dilstenson. With the free kick here. It's a lot of air underneath it. Vermont can touch it up first. They do, but it goes wide right. That might have been the best opportunity Vermont's had this afternoon. Yeah, I think it has to have been. Like I mentioned, a lot of time in this half of the field and in the Wildcats third, but not a ton of quality possession, really. Not really able to you know, find, find the passing lanes and stuff like that. The Wildcats always swarming, always looking for that steal. That was Vitali on the shot, the freshman out of Rochester, New York. Trying to become the first player on this Vermont team to have more than one goal. And we got another Catamount player down, slow to get up, and that's Vitali. Actually, check that, that's Max Murray. Uh, so, take another look. So, Vermont, a second chance here as we get another look at that one. Both players just going for it. Let's see the height that Minutier gets on him and his athletic ability there kind of cost him as you, his elbow right in Murray's head. Another foul here as the Catamounts are really taking a beating in these final couple of minutes of the first half. Actually, we got two players down, one on each. Catamount player is back up quickly. And this is just the big crowd here. The second bounce, ooh, oh, I think that's Pinkham. Like they just knocked heads. Yep. Pinkham took a shot. Yeah, like you said, the knocked heads both going for it. And he's 
able to walk off under his own power, which is a good sign. Huge opportunity here for, for Vermont. Don't get a ton of looks like this against a Wildcat defense. Ends up being foul against UNH. So Vermont with 125, this would be a huge momentum swing in their favor. That brings the fouls up to 10 for New Hampshire, just eight for Vermont. Free kick opportunity. He started off by Morrison. Comes back and then, I don't know if that was deflected, but that was well off target. Get all Dilston's in there. UNH will take it back. With a minute left now. A couple more substitutions for each team. Looks like that's Pinkham that just re-entered. That's good to see. Been a physical game. Here we go. We've got another another whistle, another player down. Rebio. Yellow card to Al Stinson. Yep. See this one. <laughs> oh, look, he took a bit of a side shot. I mean, he's trying to make a case. Argument in his favor. It's not gonna win the argument. Yeah, it's one thing. I feel like we haven't seen too much drawing with the officials today with all the fouls that have been called, but Adelstenson clearly disagrees with that one. This one past Manudier and comes back to midfield. Does Vermont have a rush in them? Just about 20 seconds here. Keep an eye. Only 20 seconds left, but this is these are the kind of chances where UNH likes to capitalize when the other team starts pushing ahead and where they beat them in transition. Probably not enough time right now, but. Oh, yeah, they had an issue throwing it in there to change the ball. This one popped up. A lot of air underneath this, and that'll do it for the first half. Pretty good defense there from the Wildcats. Bridger Hansen anchoring it, and the Wildcats take the one to nothing lead off the Chris Pinkham goal. It was a beauty. Took it off the chest and his team, it's Pinkham and the Wildcats celebrate a good first half. We'll see what they've got in store. We'll adjustments that Vermont will make in the second half coming up here on America East TV. I've seen enough. Too much hate, too much discrimination, too much racism. In the America East, we believe in equality, justice, and belonging. And we believe that Black Lives Matter. This is not a moment. This is a movement. We will use our platform to combat racism. To fight for what is right and to be strong allies. To fight for social justice in our communities and beyond. We will fight to end racism. UNH believes in unity and coming together to make a difference. UNH stands for positivity. Fairness for all students and student athletes. For the fight against police brutality and systemic racism. It's for equity and empathy for all. It's for a commitment to continuous improvement. UNH stands for equality. At UNH, there's no room for silence. If you're supporting UNH athletics, you're not only supporting us as athletes, you're supporting what we stand for.
Hello, Wildcat fans, and what has been such a difficult year? Watching and cheering on our UNH athletics teams provides a much needed sense of camaraderie and togetherness that we've been sorely missing, even as we remain socially distanced from one another. The perseverance and dedication of our student athletes, coaches, and support staff has been truly exemplary, and I commend them all for their efforts. In particular, I want to salute the terrific sports medicine staff here at UNH. The professional and student athletic trainers have spent countless hours selflessly ensuring the safe return of sports on campus. And it's through their unwavering commitment to keeping our student athletes healthy that we are able to see our Wildcats do what they love most, compete. My name is Michelle Mallett. I'm the Associate Head Athletic Trainer within the Sports Medicine Department here at UNH. So some of the testing protocols that the student athletes have to go through, we have different rankings of risk for student athlete uh, um, sports. So there are high risk sports that have to test three times a week, non-consecutive days. So, uh, which is one more time than the usual student body. And then we also have moderate risk student athletes that complete the two times testing a week, but there has to be um, a negative test within 72 hours of a competition. So there are certain test dates that um, those individuals that, have, that compete in a moderate risk sport um, have to turn in their test maybe a different day compared to a regular student. My name is John Dana. I'm the uh, director of sports medicine. So a non, a non game day for me and, and my staff are actually two different things because right now I'm not covering sports. A non-game day for me is a lot of uh, administrative stuff. All the coaches need to be up to speed. All, the, all of the administrators need to be up to speed on what we're doing for protocols. And there's a, there's a, a million questions seems like every day. I spend a, a fair amount of time answering questions or finding out information. Um, for my staff, everybody's got to be screened. They get screened at the front door, staff included. They do treatment first, and that involves whatever malady the, the, the athlete is dealing with, trying to make that improved, and then going up to practice, watching, treating at practice, rehabbing some at practice. Well, UNH has a bit different uh, testing protocol than individuals in uh, some of the schools in Hockey East or America East or maybe some of the other athletic conferences that we are a part of. Uh, we are very lucky to have a lab on campus, so uh, it's a lot easier for us to get a test if someone might be invalid or if they have an abnormal that we're able to schedule that appointment with our health and wellness. Particular challenges is, is, is everything. Never in my wildest dreams that I think I would know as much about antigen testing or, or PCR testing or scheduling tests. Just all of the different manifestations of how to make this work has been overwhelming at times and staggering at the very least with the amount of effort that goes into it. But in the fall we pulled it off. I think with all the teams going now, it's going to be more challenging, but we'll figure it out as we go. So long as, at least from my perspective, so long as the students are able to do what they love to do, then the rest of it, you kind of got to make it work. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Food for thought. It's more than a common phrase. It's the intellectual nourishment that surrounds us at the University of Vermont. Those ideas. That atmosphere, those classes that get us up in the morning. And keep us up at night. Food for Thought connects us to other hungry thinkers. Thinkers who will change your world. Like this one. Or even this one. All the food for thought in the world is on the menu at the University of Vermont. Let's dig in. We were both meant to be here and like 
the impact that like she's made on me like throughout my four years here is like I will never take it for granted my like entire life like it's a blessing. Jessica Pachichi, um, people call me Cheech. I'm a senior forward on the women's soccer team here. I'm intending to go to graduate school for physician's assistant. Um, my dream job is to work in an ER in a New York City hospital as a PA. I actually got an email from one of my friends on the field hockey team about it, and she forwarded it to me, and I was like, oh, this seems like an interesting, cool idea, get more patient care hours, work with the population of UNH. So I applied. The first day was definitely overwhelming because we had to wear all the gear. I looked crazy, but it was worth it. She's got her hands in so many different things. A lot of times it's like, oh, coach, I'm gonna do this, or I'm doing this. It's like, that's awesome. You let us know how we can support you. She, like I said before, she's a go-getter. She's gonna go out and just do things, and that's what you love. She takes the initiative on things, and you know, regardless of what she wants to do in life exactly in the medical field, she's going to be very successful because she takes initiative. I do also work in a nursing home, so I work with um, dementia patients, older population, and I'm hands-on care with them. So I'm used to working with people closely like that in a medical setting, so I thought that really prepared me for um, COVID testing. Smart young lady, she knows what's going to happen, she knows the ramifications. One thing we try to do with our young women is to empower them, give them confidence. Uh, we're excited for her senior year and, and for her to be a leader and, and she's going to lead by example. She's a captain now as a senior, um, but she also leads with her ability as a player, but also uh, how wonderful a person she is. She just commands you know, respect. I am a new captain. I'm with Casey, my best friend, so that's also helped me as well. Um, she's my roommate, best friend, and now captain with me. So. I'm Casey Peterson. I'm a midfielder on the UNH women's soccer team. Like, she's my best friend, like, in the entire world. And, like, the fact that I have her off the field, but, like, also on the field, it's just, it's an amazing experience. Like, I couldn't imagine sharing it with anybody else. Like, oh, it's amazing. We met the first time at our official visit before we came in. And ever since that moment, we have been best friends ever since. I can't do life without her. It's honored to be a captain for her. So even honored to have her as a friend, but like a teammate. Like she's the epitome of like a teammate. Like she's there for you all the time. Like having her like this whole time, like what she's been through to get where she is, is just amazing. We loved her as a, as a soccer player, as a student, most importantly as a person. Wonderful young lady, um, somebody you can count on, incredibly loyal. Um, and we'll do anything for you. She is jam-packed throughout the entire day. It's amazing, it's amazing. I'm like, how does a person do this? She wants it bad and like she's gonna do it. So like she wants to be a PA and like I'll literally be there with her every step of the way to make sure she achieves that dream. I definitely wanna work hard. I work hard in everything I do, especially practice um, and off the field as well. I definitely think take day by day. You never know what's gonna happen. Like, especially with COVID, like one day you feel fine and the next day you may have to be quarantined for two weeks and like that affects every part of your life. I think being positive throughout all of it and like knowing that it's gonna be okay. You never know what's gonna happen. Like, look at us now, we get to practice every day and do things we love. So I think just being patient, staying positive and taking day by day is the best advice I'd give. We have seen enough. Too much hate, too much discrimination, too much racism. In the America East, we believe in equality, justice, and belonging. And we believe that Black Lives Matter. This is not a moment. This is a movement. We will use our platform to combat racism. To fight for what is right and to be strong allies. To fight for social justice in our communities and beyond. We will fight to end racism.
UNH believes in unity and coming together to make a difference. UNH stands for positivity. Fairness for all students and student athletes. For the fight against police brutality and systemic racism. It's for equity and empathy for all. It's for a commitment to continuous improvement. UNH stands for equality. At UNH, there's no room for silence. If you're supporting UNH athletics, you're not only supporting us as athletes, you're supporting what we stand for. Food for thought. It's more than a common phrase. It's the intellectual nourishment that surrounds us at the University of Vermont. Those ideas. That atmosphere, those classes that get us up in the morning. And keep us up at night. Food for Thought connects us to other hungry thinkers. Thinkers who will change your world. Like this one. Or even this one. All the food for thought in the world is on the menu at the University of Vermont. Let's dig in. At the University of New Hampshire, challenges pull us together. Inspire us. Stretch our imaginations. Drive innovation. Create solutions. Make us stronger. Define our character. And help us to change the world. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. And start your future at UNH.
Back here at Wildcat Stadium. Second half about to get underway. One, two, nothing. UNH on top of Vermont in the championship game. Jeff Poster, Cam Beal, glad you could join us here as we get a look in at Rob Dow, fourth season here at the helm of Vermont. And he's got some work to do here for this second half. See if they made some adjustments in the locker room between during the break, but it was kind of what we expected. Vermont is that defensive-minded team. They'll strike when it's there, but UNH is pretty good defensively too, and it hasn't been there. Yeah, that's the tough part for Vermont right now because obviously, obviously they're not incapable of scoring, but they don't they don't have the threat like UNH does. UNH is the best scoring offense in the league and the second best defense in the league, only uh, trailing for Vermont in that category. And we've seen before, time and time again, when UNH gets one across, there's probably a few more on the way. So, for Vermont, they'll have their hands full in the second half for sure. Just joining us, Chris Pinkham put that one and only goal in. You see him. That's Paul Mayer, the Iron Man who he had basically taken the spot of as it uh, the only goal that was scored. Late in the first half, his first goal of the season, second career goal for Pinkham. That's his free kick, Vermont puts it right on the leg of UNH player. And that's where we're at. Yeah, not, a, not a ton to report <laughs> at, at this point, Jeff. Had a few fouls on both sides. UNH currently now with 11, Vermont had eight. Both teams a yellow card. Vermont just two total shots, one on goal. They had a good look late in the half on a free kick that sailed wide to the right, but we even made a comment that there hadn't been any as this one through their second shot on goal. Easy save for Robles. We made a comment though that there hadn't been really anything for a while there in that first half, really for either team that they, you know, you would come back and say, oh, I just missed on that one. I wish I could have it back. It, it's pretty back and forth midfield action. The, that last shot for Vermont is probably going to be one of the ones they look back on. You know, they had, had the look in front of the net, just you know, dead center straight to Robles, reigning goalkeeper of the year. That's one they're going to wish they could have back. As I said, Pinkham got the goal, and the assists went to Hansen and Hennenberg. We want to keep an eye on Minutier, Kamal, and Mayer on this front line, keeping the pressure on the Vermont defenders here. Try and catch them falling asleep, almost like they did there. That one got away. They're going to drop it back to Silvera. Just kind of play it safely. He, he put it right back in play. Vermont still back in their own end is UNH. Minutier out there to start the second half. Came off the bench in the first half. Let's go, on the other side, a couple of guys, looks like two for Vermont as Max Murray's out there to start the second half, came off the bench in the first. As Vermont tries to utilize their midfielders for scoring. Murray still looking for that first goal of the season. A couple of their defensemen do have goals, though. Go, Aldinstenson, Barrett, and Egan. <laughs> Bryant as well. Yeah, I misspoke earlier. Evan Rulu does have two goals this year. He's the only man with more than one for the Catamounts. A little bit of contact there. No whistle, though, as this one's put out to space, but off the head of Seville. It's Lily. And Robles pops this one up. He got knocked down by his own teammate, actually. Bridger Hansen. And it's not what you want to see, though, if you're a Wildcat fan, is Robles down. Let's take another look. Put this one in. It was a bit of a bump. Yeah, bumped into. Yep. That was Murray who, who bumped Bridger and then 
Hansen's momentum just carried him into Robles. No trainers on the field, though. You gotta think Robles is gonna do all he can to stay in this game. He's taking his time. Stops the clock, 40-40. Just nearly five minutes gone here. So. He's up. up. He's up, seems to be good to go. Take a look at the Catamounts. They are in this tournament. It's obviously recently been dominated by UNH, but they've been pretty good in the tournament itself. Just over around 500. Trying to get back. Haven't won in America East Championship since 2015. Nice job taking away here by Bright. Bright trying to lead. That's Meyer on the far side of the field there, and Silvera just runs up and takes it away. And that's exactly what the Wildcats are going to try and do here in the second half. They're forcing the Catamounts to get away from their game. They're forcing them to, you know, push a little more offensively, which they don't they don't necessarily like doing a lot of the time. They like to sit back, and the Wildcats are going to capitalize and try and get points in transition here. Play this back to Robles. He didn't get much on that one. That took an awkward angle to the near side here. So they stay in deep as Lily will toss it in. I'd give it like 10 minutes just no, I know. Yeah. All the way back onto the track. Yeah. Trying to get some momentum. Yeah. And he shuts this one off first. It's going to come right back to Lily. Swing across. Vincentson couldn't get a piece of that one. It's uh, Meyer instead. Meyer with some room in front of him. And he's also got Manudier. He'll send it across to Kamal. He'll drop back, and now looks like UNH will try and set their offense. On the near side. Ball shot just great. sails wide left. Great, great pass from Manudia down there, yeah. right along that goal line. So here's the last five winners of this tournament. See, going back, the oldest of the five, Vermont in 2015, Albany with back-to-back, -back, 16 and 17, and then UNH trying to be the, just the third team to three-peak here in the conference's history. UNBC, the last team to do it, 2012 to 2014, yep. and then BU back in the mid-90s. The they had quite a few in the world. 93, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Not a bad run for the Terriers. Yeah. <laughs> UNBC, the team that UNH beat here to get their first conference championship. Not for the last year, the Wildcats defeated two nights ago to get to this back to this game. An opportunity for the Catamounts. Getting everybody situated. Dawsonson set up with Meiji. Meiji was the lone goal scorer. It'll be Dawsonson, and this one right off the fingertips there of Robles does just enough to send that one over the crossbar. So a couple of shots here as we take another look. Good looking shot. Robo is a better read of it though. Still not out of danger though. Yes. This is the first corner, corner kick of the game for either team. Uh, hard to believe. But... A little bit of a pile up here and Robles. Think I'm <laughs> extends the arm a little bit. He did. Pilja, I think immediately went into Robles. Yep. Everybody's trying to find some kind of edge in a championship. Yep. <laughs> this one just sails past. Better opportunity there for the Catamounts. UNH obviously mentioned a few minutes ago they win this one, become the third team in history to go to three-peat in this tournament. And what, what, what makes 
the Wildcats so impressive is they've played 39 total games at Wildcat Stadium since the stadium was built. They've only come out on the wrong side of those games one time. They're 33, one and five in this stadium. Outscoring opponents 76 to 14, Jeff. Home cooking, I like it here in Durham. I wish they could be playing those NCAA games if they should get back there. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the case. Each year, the last two years, they've gotten a little bit better. Went to the NCAA tournament in 2018. Didn't win a game last, well, now two years ago, basically, in 2019. Won one, then lost in the next round. So, hoping to get back there and improve upon it. And Vermont trying to say, we're not done yet. And the Wildcats reaching their highest ranking nationally in terms of program history. And 10th right now in the nation, their first their first top 10 ranking program history. The last year they got as high as 13, which tied their previous high. America East and all its member institutions are committing to ending racial inequality and promote social justice. This is not a moment, this is a movement. Join us in the fight to end racism this season. Of course, you have a nice moment. The end racism movement before the game, Lori O'Driscoll with the speech to the home crowd here about the conference and its efforts. Starts another one off. Take another look at. So Vermont's getting a couple of opportunities here in the second half. It's still a lot of time. That one just went wide to the right. Of Robles. This one comes down low. And it's Pinkham. And guys like Pinkham and Nudier started the first, sorry, the game on the bench. Started the second half. And on the pitch here. Bill Simpson, and a little bit too far ahead, and it's going to be played by Seville. He got him off to right back, though. Lily, he was trying to connect with Murray, and Murray wasn't even looking for the pass. Wildcats take it back. i kind of dancing through some green jerseys there. And you mentioned Rory O'Driscoll a few minutes ago, Jeff. Mm -hmm. The Wildcats playing without O'Driscoll today, you know, midfielder of the year in the conference, first team all conference member, along with Johnny Wolf, yes. who's sidelined today, second team all conference. The Wildcats are still getting it done without some of their top performers. A lot of air under this one. And go out on the far side of the field. 32-53, the one nil lead here for the Wildcats. Put that ticket to North Carolina as the entire NCAA tournament will be played in the city of Cary, North Carolina and the surrounding area. Both the men and women's tournaments will be played there. COVID-19 and the pandemic situation. They want to try and minimize all travel, so everyone will play. Selection show for the tournament is Monday. I mentioned UNH. Nice job by Robles coming out. And there's a whistle though before you can even make the save. UNH with that 10, 10th national, you know, national ranking as the United Soccer Travis, Coaches poll. They would have a shot at an at-large bid should Vermont make the comeback here and book the automatic qualifier. Yeah, they, like we mentioned earlier, they had an at-large bid just a few years ago, which mm -hmm. is it's impressive in its own respect because you know, the Wildcats obviously a member of the America East, not one of those Power Five conferences, right. not the Big Ten, the ACC, or not one of those schools. So that just proves how good the Wildcats were, and they're even better this year. There's definitely some talent in this conference. Vermont, in their own right, they did have four votes in the most recent poll, so there's 
kind of sneaking and creeping up in there. I wouldn't be shocked next year if you see them in there, obviously retaining some of this younger core that they have. This UNH spinning their way into the goal box. There. I was talking about earlier. Bilal Kamal likes to take the defenders one-on-one -on -one from time to time. Collision around midfield. Delstenson and Yannick Yannick Bright. Bright, yeah, and Bright is the man who took the brunt of that. Take a look here. You see Yannick Bright challenge with Adel Stinson. Just get the legs wrapped up. Now, incidental contact. Looks like he hurt the right shoulder there as he fell on it. The legs got tangled up. So we mentioned him earlier. A couple of the major award winners here. We've mentioned some of the first teamers as well. But you look at across the board there. Robles, goalkeeper of the year. Second time he's gotten that. Second straight. O'Driscoll, who unfortunately not appearing in this game at midfielder of the year. Hansen has been anchoring that defense along with Robles. Defender of the year. And Mark Hubbard, him and his staff. He's staff, coaching staff of the year. Three out of the last four. So yeah. they always say it starts at the top, right? Hubbard, as I mentioned earlier, 69, 22, and 14 all time with the Wildcats. 721 winning percentage heading into the weekend. See Bright walk off the field here. Hopefully, keep an eye on him, see if he gets back into this one. It's definitely favoring that right shoulder when he took the hit. But yeah, Mark Harbour just kind of casually coaching this game from the sideline there. Confident in his squad. Trying to get back to that NCAA tournament. Yeah, we mentioned this on, on Thursday, Jeff, when the Wildcats played Hartford. You know, up here up here in the booth, we're praying for fireworks. We want things to happen. Right. But Mark Hubbard <laughs> down on that sideline, he, he he wants as quiet, the quiet 31 minutes as possible until the end of this game. 31-03 left in this one as that's Gould that comes back into the game as Bright will take a seat and get some work done on that shoulder. Hopefully he's all right. Come back to Hanson to restart things. It's been a physical game. We've seen a couple of players go down. Most of everybody's been able to pop back up. Nothing too serious. The biggest scare for the Wildcats, probably Robles to this point. Took him a few minutes to get back up, but he looks like he's good. Wildcats trying to create another opportunity. Nice clear out of it by the Catamounts. And again, we'll look to reset. Fifteen minutes gone here in the second half. Still the one to nothing lead for the Wildcats. Gold he Ooh, big time collision there. And I'll let that one go. Both players kind of jumped up, and it looks like. Catamount player, I believe, is Lily. Kind of had a little bit of a limp after the fact. Still, just Gary Lily. And this feels right about the time we'll maybe see an uptick in energy from the Wildcats. Gonna place this one. Oh, nice job by Silvera. That was Mayer. Had great positioning there. And Nate Silvera. Hey, man, I can use my hands. <laughs> I got the advantage in this position. Good save there for the Catamounts. Because you got to think, should UNH, if they can put in another one, that's going to be very tough for the Catamounts to overcome. Vermont only netting two goals, two different occasions this year. One back in mid-March against NJIT, who they faced the other night. Yep. And then the other coming at Albany, back to the beginning of this month, in a 2-0 victory. There's our lone goal scorer right there, Chris Pinkham. Trying to send his team into the NCAA tournament. Here we go, 
Hansen will send this deep. Like, he's here. Let's touch um, the head by Catamounts. <laughs> Hans Oscar. Erfurt, Germany. Here we go, Ryan! Oh, there we go. Beautiful! Oh, go this again, mixed up with Nudier. He's trying to find the angle here around him, and it's going to go out to pass the goal line. And I believe the UNH's first corner kick of the day. Fallberg will take it. He's all smiles. <laughs> Here's from Linus. Good opportunity. Getting underneath it. I think that was Hanson there. Underneath it. His leg swept out from under him on the jump. Asking the official if they're should have been a call there on his way back into position. Ball takes it away. Media going to have to catch up to this one. He does. Slow it down a little bit. Defense comes back out in front of him. Long pass across the field. And a bird. For Fallberg. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like we're going to get some substitutions here for Vermont. Check that, that's Offger now coming into the game. Zach Barrett, who I mislabeled as Offger, 28, not 23. Rebo, Terebio just came back into the game. Centered and on cue, and Terebio has to take it away from him. Would have had a good look. Lily looking to put this one in. On your side. Oh, his socks are down. Oh, there we go. Cover up those knees, bud. Put it up the near lane here. Dalstenson. Back across. They're looking for Lily on the sideline. Rubio really in his face. They are battling. Nice move by Lily to keep that one alive, or are they. They gonna, oh, they did say it went out. They go on. Kind of a late whistle. But really able to plead his case, and he's gonna get the corner kick out of it. So you see, like I said, Louie and Terribio were, they were really jockeying. So the Vermont corner. <laughs> We had none in the first <laughs> entire first half. They're packing them all in now. Getting them in there now. Well, Garrison will start it off. Robles yeah. just bats it away. Yeah. Gets past everybody. Ball in there immediately. The one to clear that, and then immediate closeout by the Wildcat logo. Shella is the one back there defensively to start things off. Surprising there's no call there. Bridger just, Hanson just took out one of the catamounts, and here he is again. Officials are letting him play. Looking America East Defender of the Year right there. Hanson. That one right back. So the Catamounts growing a little restless here. Try taking a play out of the Wildcats book. 
trying to get away from those defenders. This one blocked by Dalstonson. Come out right by the Wildcat bench. Dalstonson's been the guy here today for Vermont. He's been the most, one most involved, it seems. Still nothing to show for it. 23-46 remaining. There's a bump. This one's going to be against Vermont, which... <laughs> The last one I thought was a little more egregious, but that's what it is. The American East Conference and Adidas are here to create gear up for game day online at adidas.com. Adidas is the official sports apparel provider of the American East Conference. Go back to all the fouls we've seen. Jeff Vermont with 12 on the afternoon, UNH with 13. I believe it was 8 to 10 at the half. So Vermont making up some ground in that, in that department. Lily. Crowding a little bit. Coachella with the big boot over everybody. And Robles will hold here. Uh, keep him honest, though. Robles almost fell asleep down there. <laughs> I mean, that's a good heads up by the Catamounts. Yeah. Goalkeeper of the year. He knew exactly what he was doing the whole time. <laughs> that was 22, JoJo. Holton Condiati, he's one of the few forwards that will see action for the Catamounts. I know you mentioned this at the top of the broadcast, the, the Catamounts, they play with eight defenders. You gotta, you gotta wonder if they're gonna switch things up as time continues to tick down here, trailing by one. Well, Dinsonson gets knocked down, tripped up. Good free kick opportunity here for the Catamounts. Is, yeah, Bridger Hansen trying to trying to pull himself back at the last second yep. there. Yep. He knew what he did. Caught himself a bit too late. So Dinstenson set up there. Alongside Oscar. Wildcats have done a good job squandering these opportunities for the Catamounts all day. Here we go. Right on. Once again, that's one of those looks if you're the Catamounts uh, on the bus ride home today, if the score holds true. A few of those opportunities, they haven't had many, but when they get them on net, you know, straight to the chest of Robles. Yeah, they're just easy saves for him. He only had really that one that he had to jump up and reach. Yep, tip up over the back yep. of the net. And even that one may have been just kind of for insurance. A lot of headers here. And we got a UNH player down. That's Jacob Gould. He's back up. So he's getting his headers back. Hallberg. Back, and it's going to be a trip here. Along with another foul. So you got to start to wonder as, as time goes on, and you mentioned how Vermont's catching up. Is it desperation that's kind of in their heads a little bit, get a little sloppier? Exactly. This is what I was talking about earlier in the game when the Wildcats, granted they're not running up the score today, but, you know, we've seen games where the Wildcats get up, you know, 4-0, 4-2, and the other teams, they just, just get a little sloppy at the end of the second half and get a little chippy. Yeah, and that's basically what you just saw there again. Just might not have seen that kind of foul back in the first half. Vermont is a well-disciplined Defensive team. Just knocks that one. Yeah, it's been clear the last, you know, five, ten minutes or so that Vermont, Vermont looks like, I don't want to say panic mode, but they're definitely starting to sweat a little bit. There's a shove right there and another whistle. And it's kind of evident. Zach Barrett put a shove right on Gould's back and he can't do that. <laughs> last time I checked, that one is in fact against the rules. Trying to find any advantage they can get. This one all the way back to their own end. I wish you could baseball for that purpose. Cross. Not and only that. Lead pass up ahead for Mudiades. Oh, 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 check that, that's Meyer. Way to go, Nick! 
Silvera came out to challenge him. He was fortunate that he got a little bit of a piece of that one. I mean, that was a wide open goal if he had not. And a lot of teams in this position, you know, up one, 18, 19 minutes to go, trip to the tournament on the line. You might see him sit back and run yep. some time. But, you know, if you're the Wildcats, you don't want any funny business to happen on the back line, you know, the, let, the, let the Catamounts get a cheap one. And you got to trust your offense enough with the Wildcats, I think, will still keep pushing forward. Lily, looking to center it. Opportunity, I just went over everybody. Berg sends it out of the box. Um, trying to connect with Gould. Again, in front of his own bench. Gonna ride the sideline a bit. And just put that back down. Greenwich hanging back a little bit. Something we don't see from them often. Trying not to let one through. A lot of players watch that ball. Just go over their heads. Pop straight up. That's going to be a foul again against Vermont. That's going to be Vermont's 15th on the day to give them back the lead after a 14-14 tie in that department. See this angle. Right in on us. Watch out at home. <laughs> Drop on the 3D glasses, Jeff. Yeah, right? <laughs> Nate with control. That's all the Wildcats really want at this point. Just maintain as much control of possession they can. Trying to finish off this 17 minutes. Substitutions coming up. Nudier is going to get back in there. See if they can add a little bit of insurance here with their spark plug off the bench. Minutier. Always add, adds a little bit of life to this offense. A nice guy you want in the game right now because you know the, the Catamounts pushing ahead. Defense may not be as prevalent along that back line. Maybe you will take advantage of that. Nice jump in front of that pass by Zach Barrett. They're trying to get it over to Toribio. Barrett with a good job. He didn't pass the team. Here we go! Midfield is Gould. And let's bring it back to Robles. He could knock off a couple of seconds here. Now Vermont comes in. <laughs> no way for the defense to come make him do something. Yep. And for Meyer. Comes right back to him. That might have hit Manudier's hand. Do you rent your home? Sure, you do. Unfortunately, GEICO makes it easy to bundle your renters and car insurance. It's a good thing, too, because you're busy enough. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. GEICO.com. Easy. Here's Kamal. Might have gotten a little tripped up there, briefly. It's a wildcat with another free kick opportunity. What did you say? Ball in Seville. Tracked down nicely by Silvera. But Silvera overall today has done a pretty good job for the Catamounts keeping him in this. And just like that, <laughs> call that one the announcer jinx right there. That's just how the cookie crumbles, Jeff. <laughs> Minutier capitalizes on my compliment of Nate Silvera, and it's 2 nothing Wildcats. It's all right, one of us got it right. I said look out for Minutier when he came into the game. <laughs> Salute. 
salute me, I feel like, at this point. <laughs> Take another look at this one. Nice sure, I'm sure Victor's not mad about it. No. Nice shot. Silvera. Like Silvera might have slipped a little bit as he's backing up. Got right. caught on yep. his heels there. Yeah, trying to stick his right leg out, make the stop, and Nudier uh, pretty fired up after that one. <laughs> It'll be hard pressed to find a player hotter in the country no. right now than Victor Minutia. Probably isn't. Three goals over the last two days or so, three days. Second goal of the game, seven now for the year. Hanneberg getting an assist on that one. Hanneberg had an assist on the first goal too. Did. So two two point afternoon for Henneberg. We said it earlier. I mean that was almost 20 minutes ago at this point. If UNH were to get a second goal, it could be a tall order for Vermont. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty much the kiss of death if you're the Vermont Catamounts. Like I said, they don't they don't get past that one goal mark often. So Wildcats looking for more. That pass a little bit behind Gould, so that is a clean look. Keep an eye for uh, the Wildcats. I don't, they might not be done right now because, like I mentioned previously, once they score one, they didn't have enough time at the end of the first half to really gain the momentum they normally do. But once they get one, the floodgates open and they'll keep them coming, as you see here. They look Energy pretty still energized, high. yep. Drop this back to Hansen. And that two-goal that two lead that we were just talking about that makes it a tall, tall order for Vermont. you got to think UNH is playing a little more loose now with that extra insurance. Nudier again down the sideline. Ooh, big dive. Nice job avoiding the spill, though. That was really trying to, it's that desperation move just to, just to get something. I think really just gave the media a little bit of a pat said, you know, nothing personal. 12.50 remaining. Catamount sneak in there, take that one away. Here's Lily again. Right up. Sounded like a three-page. Bryant. This is the fastest we've seen Vermont play all day. They got him now. Time is very much a factor. They need a substitution in there as Bryant sent that one. Beyond the goal line. In terms of shots for both teams, ironically enough, Vermont has the edge in shots on goal in terms of just shots, New Hampshire with four, uh, eight, excuse me, Vermont with seven. Shots on goal, Vermont five, New Hampshire four. Well, we got Neji back in there now. He's Yankees first teamer, scored the only goal against NJIT on Thursday. Those are the type of plays that makes Mark Hubbard hold his breath. Yep. He's one of your best players, <laughs> Paul Mayer, after we've seen a few guys knock heads today. That one's got to tell, tell Paul to Calm down a little bit on that one. <laughs> Tangled up with Jonathan Bryant. We wonder how much Mark Hubbard will go into his bench as the clock gets closer and closer to triple zeros. He mentioned this on his post-game presser uh, Thursday afternoon. He said he, he wishes they could have gotten you know the third, the fourth goal on the board to be able to empty the bench a little bit more. You know, rest up right. some guys. Yep. Because normally they don't have this quick of a turnaround between games. Normally they have. A week, at least a week between all their games. They only have one day of rest before they're back out here today. So Coach Hubbard certainly praying for that third one to come across. I haven't seen Yannick Bright come back into the game, though. I have a feeling at this point he's just done for at least the day. Yeah. Yeah. No reason to bring him back unless Vermont puts another one or puts their first one on the board. I should say. No one expect to see Bright out here the rest of the afternoon. All able to take that one away. As Merritt's Taken down, no call that time. The way he felt looked like they don't want to pass got tripped you, up. Bud, you're bad. Right on cue. I can't quite make out who it is with two Wildcats getting warm over inside their bench. Yep. Off his chest. That's a good way. Three green jersey surrounding him. That's cool. Oh. Oh, uh, trying to 
pressure in the corner. Send this one across. Come on. And Silvera able to scoop it. What a feed from there, there. Out, outside foot, be able to get that much power on it. Out of mounts. Desperation mode now. It hadn't been already. With nine and a half remaining. Lily waits just a second here. Better and Robles tracks it down. It's knocked down, but makes the save. Engage and stay connected with America East through its social media channels by following America East on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Also, download the brand new America East app in your app store to check out live and on-demand video, as well as get the latest news, scores, and stats. Three, two, one. So it'll come all the way back to Silvera. Can't afford to hold on to it. You see the two goals here scoring. Pinkham in the 42nd minute, right at the tail end of that first half, and Victor Menudier gets his third goal just of the playoffs, not of the season, no. just the playoffs. <laughs> what is that now, seven, eight on the season? He's getting up there, leading the Wildcats. Menudier, Thursday afternoon, it was about, I think, around the 40th minute, about five minutes to go till halftime. Snuck one through and then directly on the other side of halftime, put the other one through. Give the Wildcats the 2 0 win over the Hartford Hawks in the semis. Still with time here, eight minutes, but they're going to have to move quick. This one's touched up by UNH. Penalty against Vermont, though. Well, we'll to take it. to run, 7.40. We'll see how the rest of this plays out and if the officials will feel the need to add any time on it at the end. But if the 2 nothing score, Remains that way, it would be hard pressed to think that they would. We saw it about midway, two thirds away through the half. Vermont got a little chippy, yep. uh, added on a few fouls now that UNH has added that second goal. Keep an eye on that these final seven minutes. Nudia trying to hold up there and couldn't do it. He picks up. Whistle against him. Silvera very quickly wants to get this back into play. So no time to waste for the Catamounts. Here comes Barrett on the near side. Slows up. Pops it. Shot. Good look. Good opportunity. Just goes wide to the right as UNH's defense broke down a little bit there. And Max Murray just couldn't find the right angle. Here it is from the net cam. Went over Hansen's head. He had Robles frozen too. Had him leaning the other way. Different angle. Just over Hansen's head. Again, tough shot to control off the head, but had Robles leaning the other way. There's that frustration. More substitutions here for the Wildcats. Luke Madden in there. Freshman out of Hermosa Beach. His fourth game of the year. 25. He's on cue and sliding right into a catamount. Took out Barrett. Making his presence felt immediately. And, and there it is. There's Lily. We're going to get a card. Barrett Lily is seated. Get it together, bud. And there, also chiming in on the conversation. Barrett's slow to get up here. He's an angry little elf. Here's another look. Yeah, that came in pretty late. Yeah, no, not, even, not even close to the ball, really. That ball was already out of there. 
He's out. I mean, I know he was trying to get into the play as fast as possible, but he was he was very late. Yep. Rightful booking with the yellow card there, I'd say. Yep. My expert opinion. <laughs> Stops the clock at 5.55, so Savara can take a minute here to set this up. Here we go. First touch up on the header. Paul there on that one. Yep. Really trying to turn the angle and he gets knocked down by Mayer. Lily, who was not too happy, we got another card. Let's see a second look at that one. I don't want to say incidental, but. The officials could be just trying to, you know, corral everything yeah. here, too, and keep things. I want to make sure things aren't getting out of, out of hand. Exactly. Yeah, it looked incidental, but you're right. Just want to make sure things, you know, don't want to see any injuries here in the final five and a half. Yeah, it's still some discussion going on as well. After the fact, it's, they're still trying to establish a bit of positioning here. It was smartly comes up and gathers that one. It's the fourth yellow on the day for both sides. UNH with three, Vermont with one. Here's another look from the net cam. Lovely's backing up. And then had to take a step or two in. Garrett Lilly was right there. Robles hasn't felt a whole ton of pressure today, but he's feeling it his final five. Yep. No surprise there. So this is the desperation mode for Vermont trying to extend their season. I would not think that the Catamounts would have nearly as good a shot at that at-large bid that UNH would. Not ranking in the top 25, and the only only other team in the conference to receive votes, as you mentioned, but still outside of that 25. And having only played six games, they don't have you know much of a, uh, a resume either. It's not like they had some of those you know big non-conference wins or anything like that as any big conference games. And the only ranked opponent you played would be UNH. Tie them. Zero zero time. First game of the season. This one sails wide and right. Great close out there by Mayer and I'm not sure who else that was. Adam Seville, I believe. More substitutions. Another substitution for Wildcats as Fallberg gets back in there. Madden back to the bench. Can't imagine Mark Hubbard was too pleased with uh, Luke Madden's initial appearance in this game. Not exactly the way you want to come into a game and immediately get a card. Yeah, no, you, you, you want to make your, your presence felt right away. Not sure if that's the best way to make it happen, though, especially up 2 0. Came in about like six, seven minutes to go at that point. Takes a bounce. Nice, aggressive move here by Mayer. He's got some room to work. Mayer got one man to beat. Mayer tried to drop it back for Gould, but better speed defensively on the other side for the Catamounts. That would have been it right there if it hasn't already. <laughs> that's, not, that's not already the case. It's just the individual talent and maybe a little bit of his size too. You see him there. Had that reach on this one. Just, just a little too far ahead of Gould, but good, good defense there by Moulton Condiotti. Yeah, you brought it up there. I mentioned it earlier in the game in terms of, you know, the team as a whole, but Paul Mayer in particular, kind of the prime example in terms of the combination of speed, size, and strength that like uh, one of the more skilled players on the team, but you don't need skill if you've got those qualities. So bouncing and really a nice job using his body. Able to kind of stutter step around and then the ball gets it back. And 
both players looking for a call, one way or the other. Both went down. Garrett Lilly, he's been uh, involved in quite a few of these today. You see him in ball jockeying for position. Lilly on the American East second team. Vermont's 19th foul on the day. It's just with 16. I'm curious to know the number of fouls that Lily's been involved with. Yeah. <laughs> Terubio is a little slow to get up. Um, also one, pulling his ear. Y'all just mad because you lost! Remember, take it to me! kick. Maybe next year, Green! Yeah, both players going for it. Maybe next caught an elbow to the ear or something. Jonathan Bryant. The aggressor in that situation. A minute 42, and UNH is well on their way here. As we mentioned previously, assuming nothing funny happens in this final minute and a half, UNH will become the third team ever to three-peat last being UMBC from 2012 to 2014, and then of course BU in the mid-90s. A five-year run. Goes out the back goal line. Mark continuing to move, and get a corner opportunity. I mean, this, this is it for Vermont right here. Good boot out there by Pinkham. There's Pinkham, his first goal of the season. That how Vermont had their first goal for Alex Nagy and they went over NJIT, couldn't have come at a better time. Well, same case for Pinko. Robles, this one goes out wide to his left, all right. Vermont put up a little bit of a fight here in the second half, but that defensive-minded approach. You know, they say defense wins championships, but you also got to score occasionally, too. Yeah, yeah that, that that game plan will work a lot of the time, but when you run into a team like the UNH Wildcats, again, best scoring team in the conference, and then the only defensive team better was the Catamounts, so the most well-rounded team in the conference. It's, it'll be tough to beat them when you don't, you're not able to find the back of the net. Uh, only four of their, let's call them even semi-regulars, are their seniors out there, but they will be losing one of their best, Nate Silvera. Man in the net is a senior, so. Tough way to see his very good career come to a close, but that'll do it. Your three-time champions of America East men's soccer, University of New Hampshire Wildcats are going back to the NCAA tournament the third time in a row as they defeat Vermont 2-0. Mark Cupboard and his staff continue this great run this season. Goals from Chris Pinkham and Moutier, two to nothing winners, the UNH Wildcats. So they will find out Monday on the selection show who they will be playing. A tough way for Vermont to end a good season, but UNH had this pretty much in control the whole way. Yep, like I said, once the tournament rolls around, keep an eye on Victor Minutier. <laughs> hard pressed to find a guy harder than him right now. Robles with a nice job in net as the Wildcats book their third trip in a row. Two nil victors over the Catamounts to see their season come to an end. And that will do it here for us. But you can stick around and check out the awards here for the conference tournament. But that'll do it. Vermont sees their season come to a close. UNH moving on back to the NCAA tournament. Monday is the selection show, but the Wildcats will be headed to North Carolina trying their chance at a national championship. But they are your America East, the 2020-2021 men's soccer champions by a score of two to nothing. On behalf of everybody here at Wildcat Productions, my partner today, Cam Beal, I'm Jeff Poster. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next season.